Hi everyone, it's Chris Frame here and welcome back to my channel. We start our tour on Signal Deck, the topmost deck of QE2. This is where the ship's bridge is located. From here, the captain and officers would navigate QE2 from port to port. During her service life, the ship sailed 5.8 million miles and made a huge number of port calls. In fact, Southampton was the most visited port for QE2, with the ship calling there 726 times during her career. Signal Deck and Sun Deck, which was one deck lower, were home to QE2's penthouse suites. These were the only balcony suites aboard the ship and were progressively added to QE2 over a series of refits. The suites were accessed from boat deck using a discrete staircase or a lift. At the aft end of sun deck, you'd also find the funnel bar. This bar was added to QE2 during her 2004 cruising refit after Queen Mary II replaced QE2 on the North Atlantic run. Funnel Bar utilised the space that also acted as QE2's helideck and offered sheltered deck chairs thanks to the original screens that protected the sunbathers from the wind. Boat Deck, Upper Deck and Quarter Deck were the main passenger areas of QE2. Uh, boat Deck had some passenger accommodation but Upper Deck and Quarter Deck were dedicated completely to passenger amenities. It was here that we found QE2's lounges, restaurants and many of the bars on board the ship. The most famous restaurant possibly was the Princess Grill but also the Coronia restaurant, which used to be the Columbia restaurant, is actually the location in the ship where Queen Elizabeth II dined herself on board the ship when she visited QE2 uh, during her service career. At the forward end of boat deck, just aft of the A stairway, you'd find the highest rated restaurant at sea. QE2's Queen's Grill was a special place that catered to those passengers who occupied the penthouses and the suites aboard the ship. It offered single seating dining and attentive service and also had its own galley. The Queen's Grill Lounge was just aft of the Queen's Grill restaurant, on the starboard side of the ship. This long and narrow lounge offered an exclusive space for Queen's Grill passengers to have pre-dinner drinks. On the port side, you'd find the boardroom, where you could host meetings or even arrange conferencing with an office on land. Amidships on boat deck, you could access the balcony level of the QE2's theatre off the D stairway landing. This balcony level offered excellent unobstructed views of the theatre stage and screen. It sat atop the main theatre level, which was accessible from upper deck. The ship's shopping promenade was found towards the aft end of boat deck. The shop surrounded a well that looked down over the Grand Lounge. Towards the end of QE2's career, the shopping promenade included the only seagoing branch of Harrods, as well as souvenir stores and duty-free boutiques. You could exit the shops at the aft end of the ship via revolving doors and you'd find yourself at the sports centre. This featured a panel tennis court, golf driving range, putt-putt and shuffleboard, as well as nice views of the ocean. As you can see from the model, the QE2 had a fantastic boat deck. The boat deck on board QE2 was a wraparound boat deck. It had a small section at the front where you had to go up some stairs to an area called the bit beneath the bridge, which was just underneath the bridge, uh, just about here on the model. Now, the boat deck was sheltered by these wonderful lifeboats that dated back, in many cases, all the way back to the ship's original entry into service. Some of the boats were upgraded during the ship's service life, particularly in 1994, where two catamarans were installed on the boat deck. But it would give wonderful shade overhead and you'd have the opportunity to walk around the boat deck and take in the ocean. Now the boat deck of course still exists on board the ship, but unfortunately the lifeboats and the davits have been removed, which I think changes the appearance of QE2, makes her not really look quite like the QE2 that we remember from her time in service. And I really don't understand why the boats were removed, given that the Queen Mary and the Rotterdam, two other large preserved hotel ships, still retain their lifeboats. The QE2's Mauritania restaurant was actually originally the tourist class restaurant. It was first called the Britannia restaurant on board the ship, and it went through a series of refurbishments, became Tables of the World, and then became Mauritania, uh, with a different fit out to what you're seeing on the screen now. The imagery that you're seeing now is from the ship's final year in service, but the design actually dates back to 1994, when the ship was given a full refit as part of her project lifestyle refurbishment. This refit sought to change the interior of the ship to make it more suitable for the modern day traveller. And this space became the Coronia restaurant for a brief period between 1994 and 1997. However, eventually they reverted it back to being the Mauritania, but it kept its Coronia restaurant style interior. And so the interior in this space 
really does draw from the Coronia of 1949, that green goddess that used to go cruising around the world uh, with the color scheme. In the center of the room, there was a fantastic uh, sculpture, the White Horses of the Atlantic, which was an interpretation of how the bow wave at the front of the ship would look a bit like horses racing through the ocean. Uh, it was a spectacular place to have a meal uh, on board the ship and it was the restaurant where anyone in a Mauritania grade cabin would come for their main meals. Aft of the Mauritania restaurant on Upper Deck, the Crystal Bar spanned the full width of the ship and was my favourite bar on board Kiwi 2. It was added during the 1994 refit and was modelled after the first class observation bar on the original Queen Elizabeth. From here, staircases led down to both the Princess Grill and Britannia Grill restaurants, which, while located on the quarter deck, were accessible from upper deck. The Princess Grill retained much of its original interior from when the ship entered service. This was, originally, the grill room and reserved for the wealthiest passengers on board the ship. However, when the Queen's Grill was added in 1972, the grill room became an annex of the Columbia restaurant, before reverting to its original form as the Princess Grill. The Britannia Grill's design dates back to the 1994 refit. Its rich tones and exclusive atmosphere made it a space that was popular with repeat guests. This restaurant displayed a model of RMS Britannia, which was the first ocean liner built for Cunard Line. Amidships on Upper Deck, the Golden Lion Pub was located on the starboard side of the ship. This space was originally the Theatre Bar, but was completely recreated in 1994 to become the first Golden Lion pub aboard a Cunard ship. The pub also displayed plaques of Kiwitu's many ports that she had called through during her service career. On the port side of the ship, also amidships, the Kiwitu's casino was decorated in the Art Deco style. It had traditionally styled slot machines as well as gaming tables and was popular throughout the day and into the evening. Kiwi2's Grand Lounge started its life as the Double Down Room. This was the original tourist class main lounge, but as the ship became a single class ship, it was open for everyone to enjoy. It, by modern day standards, had a relatively small stage and the seating wasn't very well set out really. Uh, there was poles that would hold up the upper level, which would block sight lines, but this was a dating back to uh, the ship's earlier career. Uh, as a transatlantic liner when this lounge used to be a place where you'd go to dance uh, and to enjoy a drink with friends. The Grand Lounge however did remain a focal point on board the ship and to this day it still remains relatively untouched in Dubai. The Yacht Club was found at the very aft end of Upper Deck. It too was created in the 1994 refit replacing a much smaller space that shared the same name. This bar was a fantastic place to sit during the day and enjoy a quiet drink with views of the ocean. It was also one of the areas aboard QE2 that had Wi-Fi access towards the end of her career, meaning it was a popular place for people using laptops who wanted to catch up with friends and family at home. At night, it came alive as a nightclub and would remain open until the early hours of the morning or until the last person left the dance floor. Located just forward of the D stairway, the Coronia restaurant was a famous space aboard the QE2. Starting its life as a Columbia restaurant, this restaurant was originally the first class dining room aboard the QE2. It was here that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, as well as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, dined during visits to the ship. In 1994, the space was converted into the Mauritania restaurant, which explains why the giant model of Mauritania was found just near the entry of this restaurant. However, by 1997, the Mauritania had relocated back to Upper Deck. This space on Quarter Deck became the Coronia restaurant, named after Cunard's iconic 1949 Green Goddess cruise ship. The design you see here on the screen was created in 1999 when QE2 was refurbished in Bremerhaven, Germany. The room featured a raised entry, stylish chandeliers and dark woodwork which resembled the ocean liners of days gone by. Aft of the Coronia restaurant on the port side was the chart room bar. This was a very popular space and prior to 1994 was known as the midships bar. The chart room as it is seen here was created in 1994 and featured this wonderful glass map of the North Atlantic Ocean. On the starboard side, the ship's library and bookshop were a hub for ocean liner enthusiasts. This wonderful space is where I first became fascinated with the history of Kiwi 2, as it was packed full of history books, posters, models, cards and other memorabilia. The library itself held over 6,000 books and was staffed by a full-time librarian. 
Kiwi 2's Queen's Room was the ship's main lounge. In fact, when she came into service, in 1969, it was designated the first class lounge, but as the ship became a single class ship, it was open for everybody to enjoy. The Queen's Room was where you would go for that classic Cunard afternoon tea. This is where the tradition that we enjoy on board uh, the current Cunard Queen started aboard Kiwi 2 with the white glove service and a harpist playing on the dance floor. The Kiwi 2's Queen's Room had this magnificent honeycomb ceiling that dated back to her 1960s origin, and it was juxtaposed by the end of her career with a newer, more Art Deco friendly type um, furnishings and interior, which gave the room a unique perspective. At the aft end of quarterdeck, Kiwi 2's Lido was the place to go for a casual meal. The Lido was once the location of the quarterdeck pool, but in 1994 it was rebuilt into a winter garden inspired casual eatery. This space offered an extensive buffet for breakfast, lunch and dinner, and was also home to the popular midnight buffet. One deck, three to five deck, were home to the majority of Kiwi 2's passenger cabins. These included cabins for the Queen's Grill Restaurant, Princess Grill, Britannia Grill, Coronia Restaurant, and the Mauritania. Kiwi 2's passenger cabin categories were linked to the restaurants that passengers dined in. However, there were some amenities on these decks as well. The Pavilion Snack Bar was found on one deck aft and was located next to the one deck pool. The pavilion would open very early in the morning so the early risers had a place to grab a quick breakfast if they wanted to go out on deck and exercise. The one deck pool featured a mosaic of the Cunard Lion and also offered two jacuzzis and a kids paddling pool. Another popular part of the pavilion area was the ice cream machines where you could help yourself to self serve ice cream. Two deck was home to the purses office as well as a business centre. It was here that you could speak to the reception teams, arrange currency exchange, pay your cabin account, and send mail to friends and family at home. The forward lobby, located on two deck, was a secondary embarkation point on board QE2. It was also home to the QE2 Computer Learning Center, as well as memorabilia commemorating the ship's service in the Falklands War. Two deck was also home to the QE2's midships lobby, and most passengers who joined Kiwi 2 would board the ship through these doors. Entering the lobby, you'd find yourself surrounded by Cunard history, with four murals added during the 1994 refit depicting the history of Cunard from 1840 to 1994. These panels included one of the early Cunard history, featuring Sir Samuel Cunard and his early ships, the Ocean Greyhounds, Mauritania and Lusitania, and the race for the transatlantic Blue Riband, the Queens, Elizabeth and Mary and their wartime service, as well as Kiwi 2 and her service, as at the time she was the last of the great ocean liners. Three Deck featured the only ocean-going synagogue at sea. It was also the longest passenger deck on the ship. At the very aft end of Three Deck, you could find the ship's laundry and florist, and due to Kiwi 2's shear, which was the shape of the ship's hull, if you stood at the aft end of Three Deck and looked forward, you could actually see the floor disappearing into the ceiling as the bow of the ship raised upwards. Four deck and five deck were dedicated to passenger cabins. The majority of these cabins were allocated to the Mauritania grade, but there were some Coronia cabins on deck four. Sixth deck housed the medical centre and the QE2 spa. The medical centre was, funnily enough, located on the sea stairway deck six, and so they used to say, if you're feeling ill, just go to C6. Kiwi 2 spa facility featured a salasotherapy pool and treatment rooms, which were managed by Steiner. Seven Deck was the last passenger deck on board Kiwi 2. It was home to the ship's gym and indoor pool. There was an aerobic studio, change rooms, a cardio room, and weights for passengers to enjoy. Areas below the passenger accommodation were dedicated to machinery and crew accommodation as well as stores and the engines. Kiwi 2's engine room was rebuilt in 1986-1987. Her steam turbine power plant was removed and in its place, nine man BMW medium speed diesel engines were installed. These engines were diesel electric and drove two huge propulsion motors. They would be responsible for driving Kiwi 2's variable pitch propellers. The ship's engines would also provide power to allow the ship's hotel services to operate. Kiwi 2 also had extensive storerooms, which allowed her to bring on board fresh food and provisions for the duration of her voyages. 
Kuichi would also take on stores at many ports during her world cruises. The crew was also accommodated in various parts of the ship, including space at the front of one deck, at the aft end of four and five deck, on six deck and on seven deck. Officers were located in special cabins on sun deck, whilst the captain's cabin was located just beneath the bridge, also on sun deck. Kiwitu's funnel was rebuilt in 1986-1987 when her diesel engine power plant was put inside. It actually utilised panels from the original funnel, but was much thicker to accommodate the nine exhaust pipes from the new power plant. The Kiwitu's mast was also a feature of the ship. It was designed to sort of lean forward a little bit to give the ship a racy forward appearance, and also doubled as a second funnel to ventilate the kitchens. So thanks so much for joining me for this tour of QE2. For those of you who sailed with the ship, I hope it brought back some nostalgic memories of time on board, what for many of us was our favorite ship in service. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe so you can get more content like this. Uh, and until next time, I hope to see you on board.